American football in Finland. The voice in your ears and the face on your screen. I'm Perfect Purvis, and this is American football in Finland. Today, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Coach Q and Chris Green. What's going on, fellas? Back, back. What's up? Yeah, I'm ready for another one. It's like episode like 50 of this year. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the AFF podcast is available everywhere you listen to podcasts. You can see it visually here on YouTube. Wherever you listen or watch, be sure to subscribe, follow, and like us. Anyone who listens or watches but doesn't hit that, you know you're a hater, but that's okay. We'll get on with the show anyways. It's first now where we get a chance to talk about what's new, what's going on in our minds. And I'm going to put this out there. We've been slacking on this segment this year because we got, we've been talking so much football. Like, we ain't telling nobody nothing that's going on. I might even cut this out. I don't know. But, Q, anything going on with you? Not much, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm, ready. I'm ready to get to it, man. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? America's in shambles. I ain't going to say in shambles, but, you know, <laughs> Joe Biden. Joe Biden decided to step down as the president, so he endorsed uh, Kamala Harris. So that's that's pretty big, man. Pretty big because uh, for one, it ain't never happened. For one, so if she do run for president, that'd be crazy too. So uh, other than that, man, I, ain't no bigger story right now than that here. So let's get to it. I'm glad you said that because I was wondering what all this Kamala Harris stuff was going on. I was like, why do they keep talking about this lady? Yeah. I, I didn't even know because I've been like out of, I've been in my own little world on the weekend just hanging out with my daughter and stuff, trying to figure out how to get this child to ride a bike because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired of her walking. Because she'd be like, hey, let's go outside. Like, man, hop on that bike so we go to the park, <laughs> stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, you're right. That's probably the most. Well, I don't know if that's the most relevant thing. I'm going to throw out another thing that I think is relevant, and that's this whole, like, uh, USA basketball thing coming up pretty soon. Like, I, I I, mean, I don't keep up with none of it. I really don't. I, I, I just – I try to stay just enough to be relevant in pop culture and what's going on in the world. But the men's team USA – They've been playing games against people. They've been playing against Americans. They've been playing all these other different countries. The game's all been kind of close, much closer than what I thought they were going to be. Mm -hmm. And then, like, people like Kawhi Leonard isn't playing, and Jalen Brown didn't get invited on the team. So that's crazy because apparently at the end of this month, like in a couple weeks, is the actual, like, Olympics, I guess. I don't know. It's Friday. Okay, so it starts this week, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's crazy. And then – you know, got to keep up with the WNBA where I just found out their USA team did did their USA versus the WNBA for the All-Star game and the All-Star team won, not yeah. the not the Olympic team. Yeah. And it's the same players. Like, those uh, are the, the best 24 players in the league, but the 12 that got chosen to represent the country lost to the 12 that didn't. And of course, the twelve that didn't had, you know, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, uh, a woman with a name I can't pronounce that apparently is super good and and won MVP of the game. So again, they got nothing to do with football, but it's just crazy the things that are going on. And, and honestly, in the United States, like if you're not watching the United States right now, it's reality TV at its finest. That everyone. Right, well, that's a lot, man. <laughs> Not to mention all the videos of the, the uh, college football twenty five coming out. That I've seen some crazy. It is amazing to me how people are playing the game and like they're doing like little skits, like they like really in school. They showed a little video like I've been on a team eight games. I've only got one play, and people are like going crazy about it. And Q like, and you, you, you and I both know it's like. I mean, that's how it is with some players. Like, that's yeah, how that's that. For real. It, it's just crazy that, like, with the game coming, that there's so many people that had no idea, like, the intricacies of college football. And the game is kind of giving that to normal people, I would say. Back in the day, I think the game wasn't as, like, I mean, you wasn't, <laughs> there's, a, there's the opportunity to sabotage players. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can tell your room you can you can wake your roommate up to make it a practice or you can not and, and yeah. get their reps at practice. Like it's it's crazy what's going on in the United States right now. I feel like this is all American stuff. And I'm sorry, I know the show is we're doing football in Finland, but this stuff is all going on in the middle of July. Not to mention it's hot as hell out there. It's not nah, gee, yeah, it's <laughs> make it worse. Make it so much worse. So much. And then Chris got on the uh, USA uh, Under Armour shirt. So, you know, he rocking with us. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Chris, anything you want to throw into that jumble of mix? <laughs> Random stuff. <laughs> you know me, I always talk about my sports. So, oh, yeah, go ahead. What's going on with you? More, more cricket on Saturday. Another win. Mm-hmm. That was good. What, what then, was score? Uh, we chased, they hit 112, so not a lot. In drizzly, wet conditions as well. And we chased it down like 24 overs, so we won easy. Um, I don't know what any of that means. Basically, we, we, we kicked our ass. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. And then Sunday, so yesterday, I had a contact game in Southampton. And we beat their ass 67 zip. So, yeah. Right. Easy money. So, I mean, is it even fun for you? Because... All you be doing, I mean, you be winning a lot, but it don't seem like you like playing nobody. Mm. I you mean, just be, we, you just we be that stay in shape. In a, yeah, in <laughs> in the regular season, there were tune up games. In the regular yeah. season, we probably have like three to four competitive games out of the ten, and the rest are easy. Mm. It's just it's just the way the league is over here, just because they split the prem in the north and south. So you've got two or three good teams in the north and two or three good teams in the south. The rest of them are just like placeholders, mm. like the bottom versus the top kind of thing. But it'd be cool if they made a National League gang. So it used to be national, but we'll see. I mean, they're doing it for Uniball this year. They're making a super prem in Uniball this year to make the games more competitive rather than having north and south prem. So mm. that's, that's going to be new this year in September. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. I just I don't I couldn't I don't I couldn't do the like the the easy games and the hard games and the easy games like I I hate that about some like leagues and but stuff. Then like that. You could you could kind of compare that to Finland because there's what four good teams so when those four guys play against each other it's but, competitive. But then but the rest to to defend the country at least you don't know who they are like very soon. I pretty much can pick y'all's top teams every year. Right, like I can tell you every year who's going to be the top teams. At least yeah. in Finland, we got some, some, some a little bit of changing around in the middle and stuff, and which is what we need to start talking about. So I guess we're done with this part. This was fun. <laughs> let's let's get into it. Right. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna do players of the week first, and let me. Throw this out here for you guys. Are you looking for a community, looking for a brotherhood? Join Ballers Members. Ballers Members is a private group to service athletes where athletes can come together as men in a brotherhood environment. If brotherhood is something you're looking for, DM Ballers International at Ballers INT on Instagram. So we announced our players of the week on social media earlier this week. But of course, we have to get into the ins and outs of why we chose them. We'll start with Offensive Player of the Week, Alpha Jallo, wide receiver from the Washington Royals. Again, it's not really about the stats, but this guy's stats really prove what we said. (laughs) He had seven receptions for 144 yards, three tutties, one rush for 94 yards, and that was a touchdown, and he ended the day with 238 all-purpose yards. Q, what were your thoughts on Alpha Jallo's performance this week? Uh, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I told you. <laughs> once, again, once again, man, I told you, man, it's, it's, it's you know, uh, Alpha and the effect that he has on games when he gets the ball in his hands, uh, it doesn't surprise us. This is this is the Alpha that, that we know, you know what I mean? So with the ball in his hand, nothing but good things can happen. It's just they've just been so inconsistent with getting him the ball that much that we haven't seen it, but. He reminded us of like what what it is that that he can do, you know. So he definitely earned it. Um, big win for them. They something that they needed. 
um, great game offensively for him on all phases. But, uh, yeah, that's that's alpha we know. What about you, Chris? What did you think about his performance? This is alpha. This is this is who he is. And he can take the game away from you, which is exactly what he did against the Wolverines. He took the game away from them. They were competitive to start with, and they gave him the ball. He just made it work. And at any moment in time, this guy can break a game-breaking play. He has that ability just to show up and just make something happen when he's got the ball in his hands. Like, make guys miss. Go score. Show that breakaway speed. And he's just he's just electric. I mean, anytime you get this guy the ball, he could score. He's that damn good. And it's it's good to see that he can still do that in the amount of years that he's been playing now. So, yeah, great to see. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed watching him play this week. And he definitely deserved this award this week. I mean, the only close person, I guess, was maybe Reddick. He was close. with. He had quite a big impact on his game. But we'll get to that when we get to it. But, yeah, Alpha Jallo, man, flowers to you this week. You were You were quality. Yeah, I'll, only thing I'm, I'm going to add in there about uh, Jallo's performance, uh, Juice Jallo, you know, he got the juice, obviously. I was I was impressed to see him do it from the wide receiver position. You know, we've, we've kind of known, like, Alpha has to do something ridiculous to score sometimes just because you can't give him the ball at the receiver position as much. And even in this game, Outside of the, the touchdown plays, all, of course, those are electric. The, off the heel, he just happens to be there, catches the ball. Um, the 94-yard run off of the jet sweep, that was insane because it's like he's still faster than everybody. But even before that, you saw him, like, catch passes. And, I mean, catch passes. He's running routes. He's routing people up, catching it on the sideline in a spot where only the receiver can catch it. And what I was really impressed about was just – his ability to play the wide receiver position. And again, we, but a lot of that had to do with play defense in this game. And look what's possible. Mm-hmm. He has to play on one side of the ball. This guy could legitimately be the best receiver in a long time from him this season. And it's just really impressive to see him do that and know that there's more to come from him. So, again, congratulations to Alpha Jallo, Offensive Player of the Week. Uh, moving to the defensive side, uh, someone we've talked about, I want to say twice already this year, his Defensive Player of the Week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Charles Ocano, Defensive Lineman, City of Crocodiles. Again, the stats aren't what we're talking about, but his do kind of add up. He has seven and a half tackles, four tackles for loss, one pass breakup and two sacks in a game. Q, I'm pretty sure this is the third time, but uh, what what about Akano stood out in this game? Um, his presence, the presence that he had, um, you know, while Josh Taylor was in the game, you know, he, he gave a lot of pressures. And uh, he's fast enough to get back to help on the run, too. So that gives you a lot of choices and a lot of options, the, the way to use him. So um, he's definitely, you know, the, a big part of that defense is not the best player on the defense. So um, in games like this against the Steelers, you want somebody like that who's making plays, and that's what he did. Charles is, is somebody you always have to know where he is. And he made, he, he made Josh make a lot of decisions way earlier than he wanted to. He made him throw the ball way faster than he wanted to, and and that's what you want from a defensive end or rush backer or whatever he's listed as. But Charles O'Connor is, is that dog. He's for real. What about you, Chris? What are your thoughts on Akano? We I know we debated who was going to be defensive player of the week this week. And it was two guys on the crocodiles that we looked at, one of them being the guy who's won at Akano and the other guy being uh Taj Alston. These two guys mm-hmm. are just ridiculous together. That front seven is scary good now. Scary good. And these two guys are at the forefront of that. And Akano was just there like his sacks were pivotal as well. Like at important times of the game, the crocodiles looked out of it, but then, Hey, the defense stood up, made some stops where they needed to make stops. It looked like the Steelers were going away with it. And the, the crocodiles defense stood tall, did what they needed to do. And they didn't enough. And, and this guy was, he was a big asset to this defense and a big reason why 
they won this game. And that's why he deserves defensive player of the week. Yeah. I, I agree with you guys. Uh, Kano was probably the best defensive player on the best defense of the week. I think we couldn't do it because, you know, social media, you got to have like one player. But in all honesty, we probably want to give the Crocodiles defense as defensive player of the week. Kano was the leading force, of course, as the individual player. But he really just embodied what that team did in that game. And again, try not to get too much into the game before the game. One thing I want to throw out there is Akano, uh, he's kind of becoming iconic for having the uh, the do-rag, like the rolled up do-rag. Mm-hmm. It kind of looks like, I don't know, I think he has dreads rolled up in there or something. I'm not sure. But just want to throw this out there. Can someone in Cineo get that man like a green do-rag? You know, I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh so somebody do that. Somebody find – well, that might be a little hard. This is Finland. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> somebody find <laughs> – I don't know how many do-rags they got just floating around here. But somebody find Charles Ocano a green do-rag. I want to see that man wearing a green do-rag by the end of the season. I want his drip to be a little bit more color-coordinated with the Crocs because, you know, they wear green. But other than that uh, – yeah, Connor did great. Uh, again, I think this is like the third or fourth time that we've named him. And we even said it earlier in the season, probably going to be giving this award to him more often than once. And he has proven that he's worthy of it every time. And this game was no different. He was a monster. Uh, basically owned that left tackle from the Steelers. No offense, because I think the left tackle did a really good job. But, you know, when you're playing against the best, you're going to lose more than you win. So it is what it is. Uh, good job to Akano. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. Hey there, fans of American football in Finland. Want to show some love and support to your favorite podcast? For just three euros, you can buy us a cup of coffee and help keep our podcast running strong. But why stop at one cup? Why not support each host with a cup? Visit buymeacoffee.com and show your support today. Cheers to keeping the conversation going. All right, let's talk about some of the key performances from this week. All that aside, these are players who deserve recognition for the play last week. We can get players one, two, or three stickers, depending on their performance. Uh, Q, do you got anybody not <laughs> named Kano? Hey, hey uh, you know what? I got somebody today, man. Uh, okay. And Chris might like this. Kevin Adams, man. I'm, I'm, hey. I'm Hey, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, boy. Hey, and it's it's hard to get my attention, man, but he got it, man. And, and um, and I give it to him because I give him two, you know, two stickers, man, to be on that team and then go through this at game after game and to see and you see that you have a chance sometimes and sometimes you don't have a chance, but to go out there and still give you everything for a team and make some great catches and actually get in the end zone, like you know, shout out to him, man, because it's not easy to do, especially in another country. You know what I'm saying? It, it's different. So, you know, he, he caught my eye with that, but just his effort, his his ability, his playmaking ability, I really would like to see him on a better team or a better offense. I really would like to see what he really can do, but he definitely still, like, makes his presence known in every game they play. And, uh, you know, so side to him, two, two helmet stickers with him, man, for real. I, I got to add on about Kevin Adams because he was kind of on my list this week, too. I just want to throw out there, man, he's made a believer out of me. Uh, I'll, I'll say this publicly. Uh, I mean, obviously, we've been saying nothing but good things about him, but I'll say publicly what hasn't been said to me, you know, as an American, anyone that's, you know, getting an A but isn't American, I'm always like, well, you know, you could have got an American. Kevin Adams could be an American. Like, he's that he's that, that Coach Q level import mm-hmm. where you know that this guy is not the domestic player. No offense to any domestic player, but you know that, like, they brought him in. You know, he's from somewhere else, and his talent is the reason he's on the field. And he shows up every week for a team that might not be able to, you know, support him the way he needs to, but it's just really good to see him out there playing like that. Not sure if he can stay here another year after this season because he might be on to bigger, better things because he's doing ridiculous numbers out there. Uh, Apparently, he played with Chris because Chris is showing a photo of the Like a Ruben picture. (laughs) (laughs) picture. 
That's that broke back mountain picture right there. That's, that's, that's that love right there. Real love, brother. That's real love right there. Yes, sir. What about, okay, so moving on from Kevin Adams, what about you, Chris? Anybody you're thinking about giving stars to this week? Yeah, there's definitely a few. My first one is going to go to one of the Butchers players, and that is running back Mickey J. Okay. Mickey J had 13 carries, 98 yards, and three rushing touchdowns. Mm. This is what this man can do when you feed him the right way and you get him the ball. Yeah, they're playing against the Crusaders, but so what? You've still got to get the yard. You've still got to score the scores. Okay? They've used him in the right way this game, and I feel like he is now probably their number one back, and I think they're relying on him more rather than uh, Cofield in their backfield, mm-hmm. so they're using him more, which is great. But at least it means that he knows his role now. I feel like some players underperform when they don't necessarily know their role, and I think with them now – with him knowing what his role is, he can go out and perform and do well, and he definitely showed out. So he's going to get uh, two stickers from me for this week. All right. So my guy, uh, I got one player I'm giving three stickers to, only because I, I assume that y'all are going to get some stickers to some other guys, but we'll see. Uh, Jacoby Reddick, wide receiver from the City of the Crocodiles. I'm giving him three, three helmet stickers. And uh, stat-wise, just throwing this out there, he had six receptions, 124 yards, one touchdown. Um, this guy's coming on. He's coming on late. Um, early in the season, we didn't know much, you know, even if he was playing sometimes. But when he gets the ball, he's electric, and he's able to give this team a burst. And he was pretty much the only receiver that they could count on in this game. It was it, The defense for the Steelers played well. And he was still able to be successful. And then he had, I want to say, was it like a 70, a 75 yard touchdown? Yeah, that touchdown. kept them in this game. What a touchdown. Oh, it wasn't a touchdown? Fuck. Hold on, it wasn't a touchdown? <laughs> oh, it, it, they called it a touchdown, but we'll talk yeah. about it. We'll talk about oh. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my bad. But shout out to me. Whenever, you know, it ain't his fault. Okay. It, ain't Red, it ain't Reddick's fault, but you know. Didn't it go down as a touchdown, though? Oh, it went down as a touchdown, but oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Right, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but it yeah. shouldn't have been a touchdown. Okay, oh, that's no, cool. Definitely it should have been. Yeah, definitely should have. But, been. but on the stats, it was a touchdown, right? Don't get yeah, me confused. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was like, I, I didn't see it. Okay, because my whole thing was that when that play kept them in the game. Yeah, like it was getting to a point where I was about, I was about to say, uh oh, they just they're gonna have to start doing yeah. something different, and I can be able to work. And then he gets that big play. I'm like, okay, it's close enough that you can still do your offense. Now you don't have to change completely. And he had a dynamic play. And so that's why I'm giving him three stars because he was he was able to be the guy they relied on. You know, uh, CP played great as well. Uh, Christian and Anthony, quarterback, also played really good. But he was the catalyst for that offense, in my opinion. He Him making plays and making catches when they needed it against a tough defense – was really good. That's why I gave him three stickers, three stickers this week. So congratulations to uh, Jacoby Reddick. Another thing, just throw this out there. I actually was listening to the broadcast this time, and I think they call him Jacoby or Jacoby? Jacoby in Finnish. Yeah, they, they call him Jacoby. Like <laughs> Jacoby. Like, uh, I don't know if, if they know that. I, yeah, I don't know if they know or if he's told them, but the, the man's name is Jacoby. And I, I think we could I think without being too like weird about it, we can get that fixed with the announcer. So somebody from the crocodiles, just let them know it's Jacoby. You know, like J ja apostrophe Kobe. That's his name. If we can say Mickey J, we can say Jacoby, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we can learn it, we can learn it. Uh, Chris, anybody else? You, uh, who else you got? We got a couple. We got a couple. Yeah, I got, I got a few more guys. I, I was going to say Reddick as well. I, I'm just echoing what you were saying. He's he's coming out now. Like, he is really, really balling. And his breakaway speed, I didn't realize how quick this guy was. But seeing him in the open field running down the sideline, like, he's he's got gas, which is good. Oh, yeah, which reminds me. I told you he was more similar to Lucas Arela's speed. Yeah, that's what I said right. last week. Yeah, you're right. But again, you're right. we can talk about that later. Sorry, I didn't mm-hmm. jump in there. I got some words for Q. I got some words for Q later. 
It's okay. Uh, so, <laughs> my next guy I'm going to go for, and I'm going to go with two stickers for him as well, is quarterback of the Vasa Royals, and that is Theo Landers. He had okay. 22 attempts, 14 completions, 215 yards, four touchdowns. I think probably one of his best games as a passer this season. And then he also had 10 rushes for 37 yards and a rushing touchdown as well. This man, I still believe he's the leading rusher in the league as well. So you've got to give him his props. He is out there, and I think his passing is getting better. His chemistry of Alpha is developing now. He was actually throwing some dimes, which I haven't seen from him all season. Like He was putting the ball in places where, as we said earlier when we were talking about Alpha, where only Alpha could get them. So he was putting, putting him in good positions. So it would be good to see if they can kind of develop this uh, and, and finish strong and positive towards the end of the season because – this is, this is the Royals team that I was hoping to see this year. Okay, yeah, they've only really got Alpha they're throwing to, and they've only got Swolsty and, and Landers who are running the ball. But if you can make it work, then why not just use those three guys? If it works, it works. In this game, it worked. And Theo, Theo played well. And I hope he's going to be more consistent moving down the stretch now towards the end of the season because this is the Theo I know, the Theo that I knew from, from, from Yui when he was at Bristol. So. Yeah, yeah. Two stickers from me. Definitely. Yeah, that make, that makes perfect sense to me. I, I like the. Uh, I think he's been playing. I think he's been playing good all year. Like the first couple games, he was getting used to whatever was going on, but he's been playing really great the last couple of weeks. Um, you're right. Those he was throwing really good balls, and then Alpha was catching them too because Alpha's mm-hmm. had some trouble catching some of those passes yeah, yeah. this season. So they're really clicking. Uh, for me, I'm gonna see who else I have on this list. I would go with. Two guys here. I'm going to go with two guys. I'm giving two stars to. First is defensive back from Lawyer Crusaders, Alfonso Munoz. Uh, Stat-wise, three tackles, one PBU, one interception. And then also a defensive lineman from Lawyer Crusaders, Tyron Dixon. Now, these two guys, I'm, I'm going to talk about them like I watch the game. I'm looking at number one at corner. I'm looking at number 99 on the D-line. I, I'm even looking at number eight at linebacker. And they're good players. They're really good players. There's just literally not much help around them. But we saw in this last game, Munoz, again, I only watch it until it's a blowout. But from what I saw, he was running with Lucas Arrow all day. Like, yeah, two picks. Yeah, yeah, two picks. Yeah, oh, yeah. I only saw, I guess I only had one of the stats. But yeah, he was, he was with him all day. And he had that one pick. I saw him catch a one pick where he jumped another route got the pick so that was really good but again it's not even about the interceptions it's about him being able to play that position you don't necessarily have to get a whole bunch of interceptions at corner but if you can stop the other guy from catching the ball you did your job and he can do that against anybody in the league which makes him a legitimate corner in a league where we don't have a lot of good corners and i'm just watching him play and obviously he joined the team late so we didn't know about him earlier before the season but since he's joined the team he's been a, a a solid guy for them on that side of the field. And he's had a lot of plays that kind of kept them in games where they maybe shouldn't have been in at that time. So just wanted to give him some flowers today. And then Tyron Dixon, haven't said his name that much this year, but I've been watching him all year. He's dominating. At his position on the D-line, he's dominating. But, again, he's not going to get a lot of pub. He might not even get a lot of stats because you can run the other way on this team and then he's just out of the play there's not much you can do he hustles to the ball he gets he wins his matchup every time and even in this game you see him play against better players and you're like okay let me see what he can do same guy every week he's gonna win that matchup and he can do that for you so i just want to give both these guys their stars their flowers because you know trying to let everybody know that we're out here watching Okay, we're watching everybody, and these two guys, even though it was in a losing effort, I saw them out there putting it in, uh, doing very good work. So, just want to give them both two helmet stickers. Uh, what who else you got, Chris? We still got time, yeah. I got a couple more. I'm gonna do these two quick. They're both from the Steelers offense. I'm gonna go with new running back Francois Guillem. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't butcher that name. 26 carries, 111 yards, two TDs. Finally, the Steelers have a legitimate running back threat. And this guy mm-hmm. is it. 
He did great for him. He was real shifty. He's kind of like a smaller back. He doesn't look like he's got much size, but he's real shifty. He's got good cuts, makes good reads, and uh, gets into the end zone, which is what you want from your running back. He he definitely uh, had a couple of those uh, <laughs> crocodiles' ankles in that game. Like I've seen it a few yep. times. Just, people just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like leg. Oh, the, one, the first touchdown he scored, dude had him dead to rights, and he just yeah. put a little uh uh-uh on him and. Grab air, hey, buddy. Yeah, Grab hey, buddy. Air. Skating around the sk- skating around the rink. It was crazy. <laughs> continue, Chris. Sorry. Yeah. Chris. So Sorry. for me, I'm gonna give him three because yeah. I feel like it's his first game. He's got over a hundred yards and he's got two touchdowns. So I, for me, that's a three star performance because yeah. he's it's brand new into this offense. He's made an impact straight away. Okay, will be on the losing side, but again, we'll get to that when we get to it. And then the second <laughs> guy, the second guy I'm gonna go with is Noah Choke because. I'm going to give him one star because he stepped yeah. up. Yeah, he, stepped he did what up he had to do. Quarterback. Right. Emergency quarterback. He had a rushing touchdown and a two-point conversion as well. So he he had to step up, and he did what he did all right. You know, he's a guy that's not really a quarterback by, by trade, but he did a management job. He did a good job. They could have won the game with him there. They didn't, but it gave him an opportunity to win. So that's why he gets one star for me. Yeah, those are good picks, too. I think I have a couple more players too. Oh, oh, I can do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do three players. But I can. I'm gonna do it real quick. So I got two guys from the Royals, and I'm giving them both one star. Defensive back Rory Kelly. He had two and a half tackles, one PBU. Defensive back Peter Lundstrom. He had one and a half tackles, one interception. Now the reason both of these guys are getting a star from me is because both of them are good enough on the defensive side that the Royals were able to sit out for. Like that, just having them two players, like we've been saying this all year, they're trying to, the Royals have been trying to figure out how do we, you know, get a better defensive backfield. And they have Alpha playing both ways. And I said it earlier, if you have Alpha playing one way, just on offense, look what he's able to do. Almost 250 yards to all purpose. And I know that doesn't sound like I'm talking about these two players, but you have to be good enough to replace somebody like that. On the defensive side, Alpha, we had him on our all-Finland team last year, first team as a defensive player. So you have to meet that expectation for the Royals to say, okay, we're going to sit Alpha. Can we trust you? Roy Kelly is fresh off a championship in Sweden, just won with the Crusaders. Fresh off of that, comes in, says, Give me this ugly number 33 because he's number one over there. So obviously 33 is not the number he won't, but it's probably the only thing that fit him. And he's like, you know what? That's okay. I'm going to play safety. I'm going to be outside backer. I'm going to be nickel backer. I'm going to come down the box. I'm going to make plays. I'm going to break up passes. I'm going to do my thing. And immediately since he's done that, last week he did okay. This week he did another phenomenal job of being just good enough. Uh, the, the Royals defense, that's how they play, like, it's not. It's never going to be anything spectacular. But if that secondary group can hold, they have a chance. And that's what that's what Roy did. And then again, Peter Lundstrom came in there. You know, got a little interception. And he what what Lundstrom brings is he kind of brings the same vibe that you get from Alpha. You you just see that defense get excited whenever Peter Lundstrom does anything. I mean, maybe a little too excited, but that's the Royals. That's the the new Royals that you kind of have to get used to and. Peter Lundstrom kind of embodied that. So these two guys, love them to death, glad that they were able to play defense so Alpha could play offense. And they were good. They actually were good. Not just bodies, actually good players. So giving them both one star for being good players. All right. Last guy I'll talk about. Then I'm done. I got to give one star to my guy, 6'4", Yane Sakura. For doing what I needed him to do. I said he was going to go ahead and head top somebody over there. And he did. It should have been P.I. I I didn't see no flags. I didn't see no flags. All I know is Yane Sarkula with the tub. So you get a star from me. He had four receptions, 39 yards, the one tub. And I know this for a fact. When he caught that, that touchdown, he told his quarterback, Find me, baby. Find me. So he went. In, so he gave it to him. He he told him give it to me. He gave it to him, and he exactly like I said that he would. And that's what that's why he definitely get a helmet sticker from me because man, 
I'm not gonna lie. I was watching the whole game. I was sweating. I was like, um, they ain't got to the red zone. They ain't thrown that fade yet. What? What? I'm waiting for it. So uh, again, uh, shout out to Yane and Christian Anthony for making the throw. It was a terrible was a throw as well. It's a terrible throw. Horrible. Look, 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 look. Did, was it a touchdown or was it a touchdown? Yeah, was it a touchdown or was it a touchdown? On, paper, on, paper, paper, on the field. It was a touchdown. It was a touchdown. Boy, they was wrestling. <laughs> you like both of them was wrestling first, and then he was like, "Oh, we playing we playing football still." <laughs> hey, they, they both had an opportunity. One of them got the ball, and all I know is the guy I said was gonna get it got it. So I was really glad to see that. Um, again, it still was one of those situations in this game. There was a lot, a lot of situations in this game, and this was just one of one of many where. You needed a play from somebody on the crocodiles. And Yane was the guy to make that play. And again, we already talked about Reddick making his play. We'll talk about it later in the game. They had more people step up and make plays. So again, give him one helmet sticker for making the play that he needed to make. Uh, he's trying to get his stats up. So that was good. Uh, Chris, who's the last guy you got? My last my last guy I got, I mentioned him earlier when I was talking about Charles Ocano, and that I can't we can't get out of here without giving him some stars as well. I'm gonna give him glad stars. you said that. Yeah. And as Taj Tyreek Alston. Okay, he had five solos, three assists, six point five total, two TFLs, and this guy was a machine. The partnership he is creating with Ocano is is becoming unstoppable. These two players are ones to watch. And they could be the reason why the crocodiles could go all the way this year. Agreed. I was to eat a kiss. All the way where? All the way where? Oh man, I'm, I'm glad you you brought up Austin because I wanted to say something about him too. But I didn't, I didn't put him on a list because I just assumed that one of y'all was going to say something about him because he has such a good game. In my opinion, I think <clears throat> I think he had the best game out of all the Crocodiles defenders. I just think statistically he wasn't able to get the numbers like Okano had. Like a couple of those a couple of those sacks, I believe he forced the sacks, and again. If we had QB pressures, like if we had QB pressures, like we would be looking at a lot of these defensive players differently. Because there's some guys that are they're getting there all the time, especially on these teams that aren't winning or like they don't have multiple good players on defense, so they can't get sacks because if one guy pressure, nobody else is there to get the sack. So you can't even like work off of each other. There's a lot of guys doing that, and he that's what he did in this game. I think he played against a little bit better competition in Robert Mahali at the right tackle position. So it took him a little bit longer to get to the quarterback, but he was still putting pressure. And then Akano was already there. Akano was getting there like, like that. So I think them two working together is it's dangerous. And I guess it'll get them all the way to wherever Q say they're going. <laughs> I mean, they can, they can go. They can probably go. They can probably go with that team, though. They can. Okay, they they, they, they just beat the huh? Why the heck are they not? Yeah. I mean, technically. We'll yeah, get technically. We'll, we'll yeah. get to it. We'll a win is a win. A win is a win. <laughs> Speaking of that, I guess we'll just get into the games now. <laughs> All right. Are you a fan of the American Football in Finland podcast? Show your support and style. Rock our logo proudly on hoodies, t-shirts, beanies, and snapbacks. All designed for fans like you. Join us in celebrating American Football in Finland. Grab your gear and be a part of the AFF community. We all know the results from the weekend. Let's get into these games a little bit about what happened. Win or loss. First game up, we have Lawyer Crusaders versus Portland Bit Butchers. Q, who won or lost this one? Um, the Portland Butchers won the game. Sloppy game overall, though. Sloppy game, I think, like between both teams. This could have been from the weather. I know it looked like it was raining and sloppy, so. Um, but Mickey had a big part to do with them actually uh, taking off when they did because he was consistent throughout the game of gashing them, even in that weather. Um, but, yeah, Portable definitely won the game. You know, scored 65 points. Uh, wasn't the prettiest game, but, you know, they were a little overmatched. Not overmatched, but they were just overpowering to, to Loha. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing they could really do to, to help themselves out. I mean, Moses didn't play. It was, it was bad for him. So, uh, but yeah, they, they definitely won the game. Poor Bruce Bruce's won. What about you, Chris? What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, agreed. Poor Bruce won the game. Their Russian attack was ridiculous. I mean, they had two guys close to 100 yards, averaging 8.7 yards a carry, 236 yards rushing, and six rushing touchdowns. Six rushing touchdowns. Both running backs had three each. Gwinner had two passing touchdowns as well. They just they just beat them up on all of the phases of the game. Um, I don't think they scored on special teams, did they? No, I don't think they got those. Yeah, so they let me down there, but – Hey, I mean, they had a great game, and they clearly won the game. It was a blowout. We don't need to talk too much on it, but they played I, well. I agree. I agree. It was a blowout. Uh, Butchers won. I, I agree with Q, though. It was a little sloppy. A little bit boring for me to watch. And, again, I'm pretty sure I only watched, like, the first two quarters. I think I watched the first half. Like It was, like, 20 – was 28 to 7 or something like that? Once they got up by three or four touchdowns, I usually turn the TV off because it's not football anymore. But in this game, I really just felt like the Butchers kind of dragged it out for me. I know the stats and stuff, like what you said, Chris, that mostly happened like in the second half and stuff. And I did see Herbin and score one touchdown early, and that looked good. But, again, there wasn't anybody really giving them any anything to stop them. I, again, I do think that it was relevant that there was interceptions thrown to this defense. I think the defense um, had a couple plays that forced the Butchers to do things they shouldn't have done. And relying on a running back was more out of uh, necessity than want. I think when the Butchers run the ball this much, it just shows that they, they're not clicking in the passing game, which you could do against the Crusaders. But I don't know if you could do that against everybody. And I, I do agree also that, I think Nikki J is underrated. And I don't know who's underrating him. Maybe it's just me and my mind underrating him because I'm, I'm always <laughs> looking at, like, who is the top running backs. And he is one of my favorite running backs because he's so versatile. But I don't ever get to see, like, him play running back for this team because of their identity offensively. But if you, if you watch this game and see, like, if you just let that man cook, he will cook. Um, I know they have this whole thing about getting Alexi Herbin in, into the mix and, you know, rotating and all that. You know, that's the depth of the running back. But, again, there, there's something about him that just stands out. Is he's a running back that's small in stature and height but has the physical build of a running back. And it's really good to see because you'll see him get those tough yards. If it's fourth and one, fourth and two, Mickey J can get you two. But also if it's – third and 10, you do a draw play, he might get you 10 because he has that kind of explosive ability. Um, I think that they need to give him the ball more often. I think he needs to be the central force of the offense. But again, I'm not the coach. They do what they do. So let's move on to the next game. Uh, win or loss, the second game. Uh, was it Wasser Royals versus Helsinki Wolverines? Chris, I'll let you take this one first. Who won or lost this game? Barca Royals won. They were the better team. The Wolverines did what they could to try and keep up with them, and it was competitive. It was competitive in the first quarter. They were going drive for drive. It was competitive. But as soon as Alpha got that big touchdown, I was like, this is it. The floodgates are opening now. Then he got that lucky one in the end zone where it came off someone's boot. And he just stood there and caught the layup. Like, it was just some crazy thing. I've never seen that before. Went through defender's hands, hit a boot of a, a Vassar receiver, and then went straight up to, to Jala's hands. So, I mean, he was in the right place at the right time, made the catch. Landers balling out, as we talked about earlier as well, making great throws. Seeing his improvement this season has been good to watch. And, yeah, I mean, Alpha Jala was just unstoppable. Like, this guy was a machine this game, and he could not be stopped. And this is what, what what we were talking about earlier. Don't let this guy take the game away from you. And he did that. He took the game away from them. They got a few consolation scores in the in the third and fourth quarter of the Wolverines. But, I mean, it was a blowout, really. I mean, I don't really count those last three scores. I, again, I stopped watching sort of like in the third quarter just because I thought, well, the game's over now. It's done for. Um, obviously, some bright sparks from the Wolverines. Kevin Adams doing his thing. 
as always, 11 catches for 181 and a touchdown. But it's the same names we see on both of these two teams every time that we see the Royals or the Wolverines play, whoever they're playing. It's always Alpha, Landers, Swosti, and then for the Wolverines, it's Kevin Adams and William Young. That's it. We don't see really anyone else making any impact on the game. I know Lagora had a rushing touchdown late in the game, but we don't we don't really see anyone else for these two teams. So I guess that's why they're both sitting near the bottom this season. But yeah, the Royals definitely won this game. What about you, Q? What are your thoughts on it? <clears throat> um, like like Chris said, the Royals is just too much for him. Um, Alpha, everything possible good that could happen went for him. Um, so even the crazy pass that he caught off the foot and all of that, you know, even Swarovski gashed him a little bit. Um, the Royals defense made plays. They got picks. They got turnovers. Um, it was a team effort for them, you know, even though it was against who it was against. They still had that confidence. You know, they were getting turnovers and the team celebrating. They were happy, excited on um, the Royals. You know, they, they have fun in this win. So I think it was well needed, you know, definitely for them. Um, but, yeah, they, they won this fair and square. Yeah, I, I want to say that the Wolverines lost, but that just be stupid. They, I mean, you guys are right. The Royals won the game. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a, a little shade anyways. They won the game, and they celebrated like they were actually beating somebody. I, I find that problematic going forward. The Royals have won three games. Two of those games have been against the Wolverines. One game has been against the Crusaders. They, I think they're going to play the Crusaders next week or something. Like that will be their their other win. Yeah, I'm sorry, that does not impress me. I, I, I'm again, I'm glad that they won the game. You got to win the games you're supposed to win. I'm glad that they get excited when they win, but I still want them to be a team. Uh, this is a team that we always say have a chance to make the playoffs, and we don't feel that way about them this year. Even though they, they have three really good players on offense, they have mathematically, mathematically, they're technically not out because they're yeah, three and but, four. But and they the have last to beat five games they've got are at home. But they have to beat someone who's not the Wolverines or who's correct. they have to beat someone correct. who is technically better than them. They've they not done the that this year. They could beat the Butchers. We but they haven't. They haven't they yet. Haven't. But they could, and, and yeah, in theory, you know, I could be president in theory. I don't oh, know. So <laughs> you know, if, I mean, they if Camilla the steps week. down, <laughs> oh, you said Chris is saying they play in the last week. That's why you're saying that, okay? Because they could, they could not play their starters, and then no, they're playing the Roosters uh, week 14. Yeah, so we have 14 12, weeks. two weeks before the last week. No oh, game two weeks. Week. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, depending it, on where they're sitting at, they could squeeze they out could, some. The, if someone else wants to like let them in to not, play, to not yeah. play somebody else or something like that, yeah. but again, it's one of those things that I feel like I have high expectations for the Royals every year. Maybe I should lower my standards to them as a team and organization. But I, again, when they win these games, I always feel like I don't care. I, I want to see you do something, do something. <laughs> I think Alpha played great. I mean, the offense, I mean, I think Theo was still playing great and Swosti and Swosti. Defensively, they look good against the Wolverines. I couldn't say this defense is doing that against anybody else. So, It'd be interesting to see how the corners do against a different quarterback and a different offense. Yeah, see if they yeah. do the same sort of job as what they did this game. And I, I feel bad for the Wolverines because I don't, I don't understand if they're actually trying to get better. Because, like you said, they're using two players. They're finding they're finding new ways to get Will the ball and run it back. I've seen a, a couple of wrinkles in the in the play selection and play scheme that they're doing, the type of runs that they're doing. And that's helpful because Will is doing really good now. They have him playing more running back, running back position. So that that's something very good for them. But again, you got one receiver. I don't know how. I, I st- it does not make sense to me. Because he must be that good that they have one receiver and people are not – he's he's averaging almost 200 yards a game. He's, on a team where no one else is going to catch the ball. You know no one else is going to catch the ball. 
do you want to hear his do you want to hear his stats for the year so far? So eight games, oh, 54 receptions, which he leads the league in. And he leads the league in receiving yards as well with 753. He's only got three touchdowns, but he leads the league in those two stats. So so nobody knows how to stop this guy. <laughs> hey, you know, my guy. You, you know what? It, it also could be one of those situations of like, yeah, we know how to stop a normal like passing route combination. But then when you see how the Wolverines do their offense, you're like, that just don't make sense. Like, he shouldn't have thrown it here. He caught a tip pass in his last game. Someone else missed the ball. It went in the air, and Kevin Adams caught it in stride. Like, how are you supposed to practice for that? How are you supposed to stop that? They're like, he getting yards, and we, we we stopped the other guy. They're tipping it to this guy. That's the only way. Oh, man. He's, he's a really good receiver. So, at least the, at least the Wolverines have something to look forward to every game with Kevin Adams and Will Young. That's for sure. Defensively, they – they just overmatched. They, they definitely need to get some players back, I want to say, on the defense or something. But, yeah, that's that game. There's not much. Let's talk about the real game. Yes. Siyoki Crocodile versus Cropio Steelers. Came down to the, the wire. They call it the Thriller in Center Yoki. That's what they're saying online. They call it a Thriller. I don't know if it was a thriller. It was a stiller. Maybe not a thriller, but it was a stiller. It was a good game. It was a good game. Uh, man. Q, win or loss? What are you thinking in this one? Um, I believe the Corpio Steelers lost this game. Mm. I believe they lost this game. Um, not really for their own fault, though. They got put in a situation that I don't think any team ever expects to be in, and that's having a quarterback not play a whole half, especially when he's a driving I, force. I got to digress. We, we say not their own fault. I think it's well documented. That, that, that's, 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 not the, that's not the part I'm talking about, not their own fault. The quarterback part is not their own fault. I'm not talking about I that. Think that it, I think that is their fault, though, right? Oh, no, not it's not it's not their fault that he got hurt. That, it is their fault that he got hurt. The reason they lost isn't their fault. Oh, yeah. The reason that's they what? what? Yeah, we will get to that. But that's why. That's okay, why. go ahead. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> now, now, I, I, the reason I brought up the, the sense. Because I said you 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 plan you plan against the crocodiles. It's a game that you really really need to win. Um, and mm-hmm. vice versa for the crocs. Josh Taylor goes down. Now, but you're up 28 to 7 at this yes. time. Yes. You're up 28 to 7. That that shouldn't matter normally in a in a in a game, but you know, it's three minutes, three minutes left in the third quarter, you still up big. Um and then something happens, you know, you give up a, a, a touchdown or what they call a touchdown, and, and, and things change. So <laughs> and the reason I'm saying this though, but I don't but call a touchdown. Game, <laughs> if you really watch the game, I ain't taking nothing away from Jacoby Reddick. Great effort, great um speed to you know make a play. But there were like three linemen that were like eight yards down the field when this man threw the ball. Now, yeah, I'm yeah. never I'm never a person to, to ever blame anything on referees. Now, if it's a lineman that's two yards over the line of scrimmage, I'm okay with that. You not calling it, I'm cool with it. But when there are linemen You're right. that are You're seven right. yards down the field, brother, and this ends up being a touchdown in a game in which that touchdown pretty much put them back in a position to be in this game. Now, Finland, I'm not saying that referees make every great call, but this right here just cannot happen in any country. Because you know why? There's there's two referees they have on the field at one time. One has a white hat. The white hat watches the quarterback. He watches the quarterback the whole play pretty much. That's all his main mm-hmm. job is. And then you have a guy with a black hat on who stands right by the linebackers. You know what his job is to do? Watch the linemen. Now, mm-hmm. this play was spectacular play. It was so spectacular that this that this referee that was supposed to be watching the linemen was watching the quarterback running. Ah. So it was wasn't wasn't it an option that they turned it to a pass? Yeah, it, it 
This is another thing. This is this is a wild it play. A speed, it was a speed option. Then he this rolled back option. and threw the ball. So unless yeah. the coach, before the game, goes up into the referees and say, hey, and the referee asks you before every game, ask all head coaches, hey, is there any plays that I need to know that you guys might run, right? You want to bring the extra tight end in? You want to bring in this reverse? You always get asked that before a game. I'm pretty sure Sandy Yoki didn't tell the referees that they were running a speed option pass. <laughs> It's no way. It's Speed no option way. to the left, roll back, throw a pass to the right. And you you just made me remember the actual play because now I'm thinking like when I saw when I saw a touchdown, I immediately expected a flag. I immediately was like I was like I was like they didn't know that was a pass. So some lineman had to be downfield. Some lineman. The lineman was so far downfield, like it was like we know it's a run play. We do. <laughs> All the linemen know this run plays. The receiver is still blocking. One of the receivers is still blocking as the quarterback is throwing the ball. Oh, this is ridiculous, man. This is embarrassing for one. Okay, it's a it's a bad call. Whatever. I'm not going to say that that's the only play, but that was a big play in this game. But the, the sucky part about it is Popio lost, you know, lost the quarterback in the half. And now defensively for the Crocs, I know if you're running four plays, three of them are runs. Yeah, I'm telling the defense, hey guys, don't worry about a thing. Don't worry about nothing. Safeties, walk up. <laughs> they were playing <laughs> zero <laughs> coverage out there. No I didn't see no safeties at what eight yards? All the safeties at eight yards? Nobody so, in ten or deeper. Cause they're like, why? It's, it's, why? it's like in a game like this, you just cannot have plays that happen like with Jacoby Reddick happen because you already at odds anyway. But with a twenty-eight mm-hmm. seven lead. Or uh, whatever you think that's enough until you get put in a situation like this, and then it's like, oh man, oh we didn't expect this to ever happen to us. So what is the backup plan? You don't have one, but you but you have a, a big enough. Uh, well, Lisa, I thought they had a big enough lead to where they still would probably pull it off. Uh, but then things just started happening. So let me uh, ask you guys, you guys, ask you guys this because maybe I wasn't watching correctly. But what happened to the actual backup? Did he also get hurt or? They just pulled. It just looked it bad. It looked it bad. I mean, he took a sack on on a um on like a quarterback keeper or some play. He pulled the like, ball too. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like it just looked it bad. But they had an opportunity. Also, they missed a field goal. You know what I'm saying? Late, late. They missed a field goal. So it was it was a, it was situations in the game still for them to win. But it was just they were put in a situation to where it didn't help them losing their quarterback because the other team is fully loaded still. The other team is still going. They're still grinding. But I'll say this. Um, the fact that Crocs won by three points lets me know more than, than anything that it says more good about the Steelers than it does bad about them. Because if you have any team that loses their quarterback, and I'm going to say this again, if you have any team in the, in the Maple League that loses their quarterback for a half and they only lose by three points, only that means that if Josh Taylor stays in the game, they were probably going to blow out San Diego. To me, that's what I felt like it was going to happen. It was probably about to turn into a blowout. But hey, the Crocs won. It was an exciting game to watch. It came down to the wire. Great game to watch. Big win. The Crocs were celebrating like they won a championship after that game. It was a nice kick. He booted it too, man. It was a nice. I, I was like, man, it, for a second, I thought it was a championship game. I was like, they are celebrating. Like, happy, you know, but I, I understand it. I'm not throwing no shade at nothing because it, it's such a close game like that where you just like so much stuff is happening. A win is a win. You're you like, oh, man, I thought this was never going to end, you know, type of thing. So, anyway, shout out to them. The uh, refs, we got to do better, though. We have to do better because we can't let plays like that happen in this league, period. No matter who playing. I don't want to see games where, like, like, come on now. Two, now, two yards. Cool, man. We we going with it, but these are lining all the way down the field. It's just not fair. It's not a fair playing field when it's like that. But people mess up. People make mistakes. It is what you know. What was interesting? I I think that might have been the. It could maybe it was a makeup call because if 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 you saw the game the way I saw it, there was a lot of like fourth down and one situation for the Crocs where referees just did not give them anything on spotting that ball. And saying, hey, you're not getting it. And they had a lot of like turnovers on those like short plays. A lot of little, ugh, 
And I was like, they're the home team. They're supposed to get that. So maybe instead of getting left, they gave them a was, 75 it yards. Calls, <laughs> it was a lot of other calls on both sides that, that could have went either way. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like the the the, the late hit calls. Uh, some of even I, I still think some of them was like a little bang bangish in a way. You know how like yeah, quarterbacks, some of them, they, yeah, with Nick you know like quarterbacks run full speed to the sideline, but like a step off of the sideline they slow down, but the defender is like full speed. So like and you slow down right in front of his path type of thing, you know. But uh, it was it was still a lot of calls that could have went either way for both teams, uh, but. It was it was just like oh man I, I was just like dang boy this this you know what <laughs> I still think the Steelers lost this game because they in my eyes they were supposed to win this game. Makes sense. What about you, Chris? What are you thinking? Yeah, I one hundred percent agree. I I feel like the Steelers lost this game. I mean, they were in control of it all the way up until near the end of the third quarter. You know, they were twenty twenty to seven up at halftime. Then they were 28 7 up. That's three scores without your starting quarterback. They should have won this game. They had missed opportunities as well, even in overtime when they went to overtime. Why the hell was Jamarcus Henderson in at running back? You've got this Ooh. import quarterback. No, the the import got court. hurt. The import got hurt. He got yeah. hurt for they one. They got to have somebody else. He got hurt they got to have somebody else. Well, they don't, run the, yeah, don't run the ball. Yeah. Well, no, I would say, I would say, yeah, why not? Yeah, why not have the 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 quarterback who is Noah Cho just run a quarterback sweep instead yeah, of having I'm him handed to someone? I'm who's, fine with them putting yeah. Henderson in there as a lead blocker. We'll be it. Go run it someone. I, Go hit someone. Why not Go. give Why not give it to Ville Linston, who plays oh, running back for them all time? Yeah. Anyone? But why Why was Henderson in there? And he fumbled the ball on the exchange. They got, There's no way they've practiced that. There's no way they've never. practiced. That. Not those there. two people. No. Yeah. So. Why on earth would you do that in such a crucial – they were lucky that the, the Crocs missed the field goal on that first attempt anyway. Yeah. And then they had not field goal. I think they got, I think they they got desperate. It. Maybe. Yeah, I think they got desperate. I think they Maybe, got desperate but this game. I, I when think you're it, was in game, mode. it was panic mode, man. It was, it was yeah, like yeah. You, well, lost, you lost your quarterback, you lost your running back real fast, and then it's like – but, like, Jamarcus can't be your answer on offense. Like, even <laughs> no. if it's like, – it's nothing wrong with him getting the ball, but let me see him get the ball previous times from now. Because now it's like, oh, I got it. But, like, everybody on the defense knows you're not passing the ball. So it doesn't matter if you got Jamarcus back there or the T-Rex. Everybody knows it's a running play. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was a bad – like, it was a bad thing from the start of the play. If Noah Choke wasn't the one that was supposed to keep the ball, like, then that, that play call was just not it because it looked like he was trying to give him the ball. So he was, he yeah, was. he did. He gave him the ball. It yeah. was just a bad match. Yeah, it, it was a bad match. match. And there's no way they've practiced that. So yeah. it, it just, I don't get it. I know sometimes in, in my experience as well, I know when the game comes to crunch time and things are really close, OCs or coaches, they make rash decisions that you wouldn't usually see. It's, oh, let's put this guy in because yeah, he knows what he's doing. Or what are you doing? Stick to what you're good at. Yeah. Like, or play 4D chess. All right, we're going to put Jamarcus in there, but we're going to run play action. Mm. Let's do something crazy. Yeah, Jet that's sweet. like 4D chess out here, you yeah. know? But you don't think like that when you're in a crunch time game, when it's 28-28 and you're in overtime. As a coach, it's really mm. hard to keep your, your your clear thoughts in mind. And I've, I've seen that happen a lot of times in multiple teams that I've been a part of, and I've seen it in other teams as well watching games. So it's not, it's not a surprise that something like that happened, but... Man, I mean, you you've got to be better there. You you've got to you've got to play call better because that's just not acceptable. And they still did have an opportunity to get a field goal. It was just short, like only just short. I think it just went under the crossbar. One of their attempts, yeah, definitely. It wasn't going to make it. It didn't have the yeah. length. Like it wasn't going to make it. it. Went under. Yeah, it went under. Not far off. It was not far off. It was like um, a thirty-five yarder. 38 yeah, thirty-eight yarder. Thirty-eight but yarder. They shouldn't have been in that position to start with. Like. Yeah. They they had the game in their hands and they said, Sonny Yogi, here you go. Yeah. You can have this one because we clearly don't want to win it because we're not we're not thinking straight here. And yeah. I think that's the story of it. The fourth quarter belongs to the crocodiles and an and overtime was a split decision. And hey, fair shouts to the, the kicker, you know, uh, Mackie, who 
who made the kick for the crocodiles and, and did it did it send them, sent them to the victory. I'm gonna agree with y'all. I'm gonna agree with y'all that you know the uh, Steelers lost the game, but I'm also not gonna give this unnecessary credit to the kicker from the crocodiles. No offense. Oh, I'm but, not giving him credit. I'm just saying he yeah, kicked the winning field goal. Like that's it. And, and, and I think they gave him like MVP of the game or something. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm just yeah, thinking, yeah. yeah. And I'm just thinking like, but he he missed the the first one. Like he, he, he needed. Yeah. A, how many times do you get a mulligan in real life? He was lucky to get a mulligan. Yeah. They acted like he was like the savior. No offense, but he's not the reason they won the game. The reason they no. won the game is because Josh Taylor got hurt, and that's always going to be the end of this story. But for me, what what baffled me, what baffled me was, like you said earlier, you know you got to run the ball. How could you not come up with a plan? Like, when you're on defense, offensively, come up with what we're going to do to stretch this out. Because all you're trying to do is play keep away in the second yeah. half. All you're trying yeah, to do is play keep away. How, yeah. long can we stay, how long can we stay on the field? And you're telling me with this – Shiny new running back, which you both said he played really good in this game, and I think he played yeah. okay. But if he was as good as what they really needed, it shouldn't have been a question of them being able to run out this game with a three-touchdown lead. Um, again, defense, you can't be giving up the butt either. Like, we act like the defense didn't give up three touchdowns. Like, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't special teams. It was the defense getting beat by a team that really shouldn't have been able to beat them. But again, offensively, you know you got to run the ball. I don't understand why you have a backup quarterback if you can't be the backup quarterback in the game. I thought the number eight got hurt or something. But but if he didn't get hurt, why is he the backup? That's ridiculous. That's what you're there for is to come in and bridge the gap for a couple quarters if they needed to. And that's what he was supposed to be able to do. If he can't do that, you go to Noah Choke. I think that's a good idea. But we also saw him throw the ball. Maybe it's not a good idea. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. Tino, Tino could have had a touchdown. Tino could have had a touchdown if he if he reads that yeah. pass a bit better. He could have caught that. And it could have been a touchdown. I, I yeah, thought the awesome. guy put his hand up. And he, he was a good. It was a good defensive play in my. It opinion. was a good defensive was play. But I could've... felt like he could have he could have made a better play on it. That's all. He could have competed on the ball a bit better. Well, yeah, was, I mean, I'm not gonna nitpick. I'm not gonna nitpick that. that. Could have changed a lot of stuff, but but that was the field. The missed field goals. Um, Jamarcus got a penalty um, that the Crocs ended up scoring on that drive too, I believe, on the sideline. So it was like everything, every bad—I don't say bad thing, but every mental mistake that the, that the Steelers made, like as a team as a whole, cost them in this game. It like really cost them the fumble uh, when they were trying to seal the games. You know, when I mean, they were trying to win the game, cost them. The, uh, the penalty on the sideline cost them. You know, it, it's, it's like it, even crazy stuff can happen during the game, but they always come down to these few plays where it's like these are the ones that I think if they would have went the other way that it might have changed the outlook on the game. And still has had more than enough time, I think, still to win. But like I said, defensively, if I know I'm playing against a team and, and, and they can't throw the ball, it's almost like cheating. It's almost like you cheat. It ain't. It's not their fault. It's not like my fault playing against them that they can't throw the ball, but the fact that I know I, I thought it was going to work out for them well, because you got you got those two like you got those two pass rushing ends. I'm like, well, they're not going to pass the ball, so maybe they're, they're able to, to. They're going to crash every yeah. single play. They're crashing. You would That's think it. they would figure out some way to you know eliminate what those two guys could do. And do we call do we call this bad coaching or not being able to adapt? During a tough situation, because this is I something so. like that's really what yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, this is, is their play so. calling and everything. This is strictly on the so. coach, man. I mean, I don't know who makes the calls, like like all of the calls as mm -hmm. far as the team. But twenty eight seven going into the fourth quarter, or almost going into the fourth quarter, like that's a pretty big, you know, what I'm saying gap. Um, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta run it back. And I said, running back did play. He played good to me, you know, like given yeah, that as good as he could, yeah. As good as somebody could when they know somebody's getting the ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like – and he yeah. still get positive yards. Like, he, he played good, and in, 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 in I thought they were going to at least be able to score at least one more time because it seemed like that's all they needed. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. they just couldn't get that last one. But they just made too many mistakes um, and gave the Crocs too many opportunities. Uh, Christian Aaron, 
uh, as sporadic as their offense looks sometimes, uh, he's pulling out W's. You know what I mean? Like, I know yeah. he's on him, but, like, he's pulling out W's. He, he ran well in this game, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing, when I, was watching, when I was watching the first half of the game, even though the Steelers were up, I didn't feel like they were dominating. I feel like they I, – I feel like Josh Taylor was winning. I didn't feel like offensively they were doing a lot. Again, they were running the ball a little bit, but Josh Taylor was also running. And I was – in my mind, my thought was like, okay, when we talk about this, I'm just going to say one quarterback was running, the other quarterback was running. And that's all that was happening. In that first, like, quarter and a half, I didn't see much from either offense, like, play-wise. Defenses yeah. were playing okay, but Christian Anthony was able to get yards when they needed them. On, on difficult downs. Josh Taylor was able to do the same thing as he always does. And they both got a couple extra, you know, uh, hitting the quarterback late penalties doing that thing. But then when, when Taylor went down, obviously the Steelers did what they had to do. But I think the, the biggest the biggest fault of this game, and I feel like we're only talking about what went wrong, and I guess that's just how this episode going to go. The biggest fault was not getting the ball to Austin Brock. Like, I, he is the the most talented player on your offense. No offense to Josh Taylor. I think Josh Taylor is great, but Josh Taylor has to have the ball every play, so he's going to be able to make plays. But when you get the ball to Austin Brock, we've seen how good that offense can be. When you don't get the ball to Austin Brock, which has been the case in the last two games for the Corpio Steelers, you see how bad that team can be. And when he went down, when Josh Taylor went down, that meant Austin Brock's game was over. Yeah. Not a target, not a anything after that. That's it. So you just you just took your, your best, depending on how you want to say it, your best player is out, and now you just excommunicated your second best player in the process because you have nothing lined up for him. Didn't see a jet sweep to him, put him at Wildcat quarterback. So he's not running back yeah. to quarterback. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm not the coach. I would never want to be the coach. I shouldn't be the coach. But if my quarterback go down and I have Noah Choke, Austin Brock, Tito and Dongo, and a, a fresh French running back, I'm going wildcat with a different guy every play, and we just go see what work. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put Ville Linston, Big Butter, at fullback. Give me mm-hmm. some room, buddy. And, yeah. and matter of fact, if I, if I don't put him at fullback, I put him at tight end. I bring I bring in Jamarcus Henderson. I put him next to me and say, "Go block somebody, big fella," because Tino, Austin, and Noah, we all about to get jiggy with it. We're gonna line up and see what they got. And yeah. honestly, I think they would have won in that battle because the Crocodiles don't have that kind of box. That if they would have just said, "Hey, load it up, line it up." Matter of fact, look at what the Crocodiles were doing. They went under center. They went. And first, like, Christian Anthony looks so funny getting down there. That man, he's played, he he's played under center before. Yeah. You you know you know somebody who's done it before. He's like, when I go under center, I got to get down. Under. And he damn near ass to the grass out there, and it looked good. We've seen other teams, um, speaking of the, the Roosters, where they put their quarterback under center and you have a fumble. Christian, Christian Anthony wasn't going to let that happen. So that's something I think, again, maybe it's just – bad situation for the Steelers, but this is two games in a row now. Nobody loses two games in a row out of the good team, so and then we don't we don't know what his health is going forward. Um it looked like he hurt his arm, his throwing arm. Yeah. Mm, I, don't I don't know, know if that's a one Bruce, week, two week thing. Week? Guess who they got next week? I'm assuming like the Roosters. The Roosters next week. So that's good. They could find himself in the three seed here because of this stretch of three games. It's not a they bad thing, man. They don't need they don't they've won enough early. They won enough early to not even need Josh right now, man. Even if they don't, even if they flaunt the rest of them, man. They've got six wins, so they're they're in the playoffs. Yeah. Got six wins. So six right, as long as they don't play the butchers first, they okay. As long as they ain't gotta play the butchers the first round, let Josh rest, man. Let Josh rest until we get to the playoffs, man. I will never get used to Q supporting the Corpio Steelers so much. <laughs> you know, it just, it just seems here. so oh, weird. Man. Like, they're good. They're good. They're fine. They'll be okay. They're, 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 
I support thought, you know what? I've been getting a lot of slack when I started talking positive about the Corpio suit. Uh, now I get all the slack now. Before they say I don't talk about it and all this stuff. Now you was their biggest, you was their biggest hater, and now you're their biggest fan. Huh? As I'm talking about the Roosters, I talk about I'm biased to the Roosters. Now I'm biased to Corpio. Like I just talk about who makes me feel good at right now. Uh, <laughs> like, I think I, I gave a lot of respect to the Butchers. I said as long as they ain't got to play the Butchers the first round. The Butchers is the only team that I would want to play in the first round. Other than that. They can lose. They can. They can be third seed, second seed, whatever it is. If I'm Scorpio, I'm not worried right now unless Josh is done. Done. If he's done. Done, and we gotta find somebody else real fast, real quick. Okay, cool. You know, what I'm saying they gotta do that. But I think if he's, you know, if he can make it to, to the playoffs or there's a chance he can come back, then I think you, you wait. Again, last thoughts on this game is you know congratulations to the Crocs for getting the win. I'm not sure that. Anybody out of us really believes that, you know, they would have won without the injury situation. Because when I saw the, the – when they got to the overtime, which I had to see like a day later, thank you, Rue, too, whatever the hell that was. Um, when I saw the overtime period, I was flabbergasted on how bad both of the offenses were. They both were kicking 38-yard field goals, which yeah. means – the ball was on like the 28, which means they yeah. gained like five yards from the 25. Like, neither offense moved the ball at that point. When you put them in the red zone and said, Hey, you got to play to score, neither offense really did anything. Both defenses played really good in this game, in my opinion. Both defenses did what they were supposed to. Offenses got lucky. Crocodiles even used a lot of penalties on a couple of drives to get down the field so that they could score. And it was just, a lot of that, like at the end of the I game, you blown calls which gave them the scores. Yes, yeah. with not only the lineman downfield, the other one I think of was the circle ahead top. That's OPI for me. It's OPI. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about that one. Uh, yeah, I don't Sarkula care if they don't call it. I don't care if they don't call that one a PI. I don't care. It's like, all right, you can go and let us fight. Okay, but as long as it go both ways, if the guy gets because that's a judge. You know what I'm saying? Judge, yeah, other yeah. one is not a judgment. There's linemen downfield. Linemen downfield, when they down there camping <laughs> out, when they down there camping <laughs> out and asking for directions. <laughs> they're, down there, they're holding hands with the receivers yeah. down there. <laughs> they're down there doing TikTok videos on the quarterback throwing the ball, bro. Like, I was like, nah, that's a little, like, come on, ref. But I've seen the Crocs for 15 years. I've watched their team play for 15 years. And I can tell you, um, I that's not the craziest thing I've seen happen at that stadium while they're playing. So, uh, you know, the Steelers just happen to be a victim of it this time. I've been a victim of it plenty of times too. So <laughs> it just happens, it, man. It makes for good it makes for good football, that's for sure. Um yeah. just it, it really does make for good football because now we have three teams with six wins, two teams with two losses, one team with one loss. And obviously, according to like the standings, it goes by like the, the points thing, not points scored or whatever, but points you get for wins. So the Steelers are still in first place, and the Crocodiles are still in third place, and the Roosters they're are still all on in second 12, place. Though. They're all on twelve. Yeah, they're all on twelve. But it I, after the after the points, it goes like head to head. Yeah, it doesn't go like point differential or anything. So as long as the Steelers. Win against the Roosters, they'll be fine. They'll still be first or second. If they lose against the Roosters, that'll be different. But yeah, that's that. I guess we'll get to the end of it. <laughs> that's it for this episode of American Football in Finland. Any last words before we get out of here, fellas? I think we said more than enough today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we have. We have. Uh, I don't know if, if, if he broke it or if he didn't break it, but I, I think Powell pretty close uh, to Stokes right now as far as touchdowns, I think. I think he's pretty yeah, close. he's got to be. Yeah. If I'm not sure who broke it. it he broke it. Break it anyway. Yeah, because yeah, if he – whenever he breaks it, I'll see a whole bunch of stuff on the on Yeah, the yeah. I, say, I know he's close. He's getting close anyway, so it's nice to watch. You, get, you know, to watch yeah. that one because – I got the joy of, of watching both of them do it. And, and I got to say, people that, that get these type of milestones or individual milestones, a lot of these dudes don't even be like selfish players. 
You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. and, and Stokes is, is the same way. He was the same way that Powell is, man. This team dude. You know, so shout out to Powell, though, for doing what he's doing because, you know what I'm saying, a lot of players that came through here. And, and for his name to be, you know, almost at the top of that, is, that's real, man. So I, I shout out to him, man. All I can remember about Paul is I would never want to tackle that guy. He is, mm. That's crazy. I, I might have to go off to any of them DBs that be trying to tackle him. Like, I'd be like, <laughs> bless your heart, because y'all don't really want that. But uh, anyways, weekend's over. Uh, you catch us talking about the upcoming games right here on the AFF podcast tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe, follow, like, and share on all social channels at American Football in Finland. Until next time, never forget T I F. We go. The double flag. Double flag. <laughs>